You know, you're thinking about what am I going to cook dad for Father's Day? I got an idea for you. This Argentine style rib with this chimichurri sauce that I'm going to show you how to make is the bomb. Mm. I think dad's going to dig this. You'll be on the top of his list. All right, I'm going to show you how to make it right now. I got myself a really nice baby back. It's not quite a pound and a half. I already pulled the silver skin off of it. I'm going to take some kosher salt, spread it across. Now do it again for the front. Oh, this is going to be so good. I'm going to take some black pepper, lay it across the top. Black pepper is kind of the key to this. Lay it across the top. Boy, that smells good. Flip it over. And do it again. A lot of this black pepper is just going to fall off during the cooking process, but I want to have enough on here that we still get that hint of what we got going on. Make sure you get it on the sides. All right, I'm going to let this sit until the Weber kettle comes up to heat. We can put this on the rotisserie. The Weber kettle's getting close to being done, so I'm just going to put these ribs onto the rotisserie bar. And I actually did end up making another one. I don't want to stab myself. Just because I thought, you know, having two ribs would be nice. And I happen to have two ribs. Perfect. So, there we go. Now we put our ribs over the pit just like this. And then we fire it up. And at this point, centrifugal force is just really going to keep the juices on these ribs just coming back for more. With our ribs cooking over that open spit, now is the time to make our chimichurri sauce. And this is really the key to the whole thing. So I like to use some fresh ingredients. I'm going to start with some Italian parsley. And I need to go with about half a cup. And just kind of chop it up. Now I don't want to chop it up too finely because I know we're going to get plenty of chop when we put it into that food processor. Got my food processor here. Like I said, about half a cup. We're going to need about two tablespoons of chopped basil. Nice cut. Put it in. Let's get rid of this. We're going to need about two tablespoons of oregano. Boy, that aroma in here is already smelling great. We need about half a cup of one white onion. The white onion is going to add a lot of flavor to this. It's going to be a little bit on the acidic side. Huh? the acidic side. That's okay. I don't want to I don't want to cut it up too finely. Like I said, that food processor's got to do its job too. We need about two tablespoons of minced garlic. You can go fresh minced garlic, or you can go just like this. Perfect. I need about two tablespoons of one red bell pepper. Actually, I'm just going to use the one. I know I cut two, 
Just going to use the one. And it's probably a little more than two tablespoons, but I love a good red bell pepper. Now I do need some lime zest. The first thing I'm going to do though is just kind of go like this with my lime, kind of loosen it up a little bit. So I'm going to need some lime juice too. It just helps break down that fibers inside there and loosen it up. Now I need about a tablespoon of this zest. I'm going to put this up here. See, I'm kind of rolling it as I'm going. You know, and I'm going to say that's probably close enough for government work. At this point, I need about a quarter of a cup of lime juice. Good squeeze, fresh lime. Love it. If you have a beer, you know, be perfect for that. All right, that's probably close enough there. We're going to need some EVOO, maybe about a half a cup. Perfect. I'm going to need a couple of tablespoons of some red wine vinegar. Give it that acidity. About a tablespoon and a half kosher salt. And about one teaspoon of pepper. Now I got my handy dandy manual food processor here. And I just want to give it a couple of chops. Mix it up a little bit. Because I really I don't want a paste. Just want a, something that just kind of blends together, tastes good. Something the entire family is going to enjoy without the paste. Give it another check. Yeah, that's looking good. What a mess, though. But that's all right. All right. I think that's good. Let's give it a little taste test. Mm. That's awesome. You get the sweetness from that basil, get the acidity from the onion and that red wine vinegar, and then you get that smooth flavor from the oregano. That's great. You could use it right now as is. You wouldn't have a problem. Everybody would love you for it. But this needs to marry up. I'm going to put it in the refrigerator for two hours. That's why I'm saying it's perfect to do this while your ribs are cooking. See you in about two hours. These are the ribs, looking good, just slowly going over that pit. Oh, let's watch that, I could watch this all day. It's been about two and a half hours, and I'm gonna take these ribs off. They look great. Starting to pull back from the bone. I mean, they're great, they're coming in at about 185 degrees. I'm going to let them rest. But Before we cut into these ribs, I just want to show you. It's got a great crust on it. See that bone starting to pull back? There's my grandson. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about right there. Let's take these ribs off. Good looking ribs. Flatten them down a little bit. Mmm, it's cut into one. Look at that. Nice and juicy still. A little bit of a smoke ring. I want to try our ribs without the chimichurri sauce because 
Let's face it, it's hard to have a bad rib. Even a bad rib's a good rib. Mmm. Got a crust on it. That salt and pepper flavor on there really complements this rib. Yay! You'd be okay just doing it like that. But, let's try it with our sauce. All right, come on. There we go. Nice little dose on there. Mm. I don't care. I'd eat these any day. Wow. That salt flavor comes through, but our chimichurri sauce, chimichurri sauce, excuse me, really, really does complement the flavor of that meat. You saw how we did it. Tell me if you've ever made this before because I'd be curious to see how you do it because I know there's a hundred different ways of going about this. When I researched how to make chimichurri sauce, I literally saw probably 15 different ways of making it. But this is the way I went and I'm telling you, it's, it's really good. All right, talk to you on the next episode, late. It's like Worf in the next generation. Wow, these things are good. Look at that. Bone fall off goodness right there. Almost falling off the bone. Close enough. Yeah. Uh-oh. Happy Father's Day. Happy whatever day. Maybe it's your birthday. I don't know. Man, I'm telling you. Hope I get a lot of good pictures out of it. Yeah, yeah, that's the good stuff right there. Let's go like this. Go. Let's see if you can. Hi, I'm Worf from the next generation. I only eat meat.